Greetings to all. My name is Madhulika Das and uh, I am uh, from uh, Ajay Kumar Garg Engineering College as an assistant professor in the Department of Applied Sciences and Humanities. So, uh, today uh, I am going to deal with the topic paragraph writing which is uh, the uh, means a topic in unit 1 technical communication subject code KAS 301. So, in this topic, we are going to study about uh, what is paragraph writing, its uh, introduction, then the different structures, how we can structure our paragraph, and then uh, the methods of paragraph writing that includes inductive, deductive, spatial, linear, chronological, exposition, and interrupted, and then tips how to write a good paragraph. So, coming towards the introduction of paragraph writing. So, we see that paragraphs are the group of sentences combined together about a certain topic. Okay? It is a very important form of writing as we write almost everything in paragraphs, be it an answer, an essay, a story, emails, etc. So, we can use that well structured paragraph. Uh, we can say that uh, a well structured paragraph is the essence of good writing. The purposes of the paragraph are to give information, to explain something, to tell a story and to convince someone that their idea is right. So, basically a paragraph can be defined as a collection of well organized sentences which revolve around a single theme and is current. A good paragraph expresses everything it has to say in a brief and concise manner. So, writing a paragraph is not an easy task. We know that uh, we cannot uh, start anything abruptly or end abruptly. So, whenever we are going to write something or whenever uh, we need to speak, okay, so for that if we are writing a uh, text, so we should keep note that our writing should be, a spe it should have a specific beginning, a middle and an end. So, coming ahead. So, paragraph has three major parts. A paragraph can be organized into these three parts. Okay? So, first the beginning. The beginning tells the topic sentence. Whenever we are starting, uh, start, um, start writing a paragraph, so first of all we need to identify our key statement. What is the key idea? What is that uh, uh, focus statement? Uh, which uh, is going uh, to be dealt in the next sentences. Okay? So, the beginning contains the topic sentence which is the key statement, our main idea that we are uh, going to speak upon. Okay? Then the supporting sentences. Now, the supporting sentences makes the middle or the body of the main text. So, our main text now it uh, just uh, explains or verifies or substantiates whatever we have written in the beginning. Those are, we can add different details to validate our point. And then the last part is concluding sentence. This is the end of our paragraph. So, it also plays a very important role. So, topic sentence, the beginning and an end, these two are very crucial because it uh, uh, just uh, the beginning, it tells it uh, the purpose of our writing. We are writing uh, what is the purpose, for whom we are writing, which uh, what is the topic that we are going to discuss about and the end, the conclusion. It summarizes our whole idea, it summarizes the whole thing that we have written in our text. So, uh, first of all, let us see what is this topic sentence. So, a topic sentence is a precise statement that reflects the main idea of the paragraph. So, it is a precise statement, a short and direct statement that tells what our main idea is, what we are going to speak upon. Okay? It should be carefully written as it shows the reader what you are going to talk about. So, basically it tells the purpose of our writing. Okay? Words chosen for this should not be cluttered and ambiguous. Okay? So, this ambiguity 
and uh, the disorganized way okay we need to be very particular about the vocabulary that we are choosing the way of expression the phrases the sentences everything should be well written okay then uh, it is uh, it should be chosen okay the words should not be cluttered and ambiguous as readers will decide to read further based on this so if reader don't understand if our sentences are uh, not understandable if they have ambiguity then the readers will not read ahead so in order to retain their interest in order to let them to read uh, our writing we need to be very specific the words that are chosen should be concrete means they should tell the specific meaning okay we sh we uh, we need to be very particular in choosing the words that the words that we are writing should tell the exact meaning the direct meaning okay then it is not necessary to write the topic sentence at the beginning of the paragraph so the topic sentence it either it comes at the beginning or at the end okay so we will uh, discuss about it uh, in our next slides that what are those different types of writing where we write the topic sentence at the beginning and at end okay so it can be put anywhere as a, as long as it reflects the main topic we can put it in the beginning or at the end according to the purpose of our writing now so after beginning the paragraph we should uh, uh, just uh, make note of the supporting sentences the details the details that we are going to add okay or uh, these are these supporting sentences are the explanations or uh, the means uh, they give the claims or evidences or they verify or test whatever we have given in the beginning or in our topic sentence the so supporting sentences explain the topic sentence in detail so this supporting sentences they explain so this these sentences they do the explanation role they expand the main topic and develop the main idea into the explanation they explain the main topic using examples facts quotes etc okay so we whatever idea we have given in our topic sentence now that idea is well explained through different illustrations by giving data figures facts quotes examples some uh, um, uh, other uh, uh, real life uh, incidents or anecdotes okay to uh, substantiate our point so they have to be related to the topic sentence hence now there can be two types of supporting sentences okay the major supporting sentence which directly explains the main idea with some new fact or new idea so the uh, supporting sentence can also be divided okay so the major sentences they are the very important sentence means they cannot be included sorry excluded okay so uh, they just explains our main idea with more facts and some other chunks of ideas then secondly the minor supporting sentence develop the controlling idea now they support the major supporting sentences and they help to develop that main idea then the last part of our paragraph writing is conclusion so a good concluding sentence brings a paragraph to a polished end it may give a summary of the main topic so we know that uh, we cannot end our writing abruptly we have to give give it a proper ending so if we give a nice conclusion if we pay attention in our conclusion in uh, framing our conclusion so that will also make our writing effective so it basically summarize the main topic or the different chunks of ideas that we have discussed we can conclude Uh, uh them by summarizing all those points a concluding sentence also gives a final take on the topic and leaves the reader with complete information okay so we can conclude either by summarizing the whole with the whole thing that we have discussed or just by focusing the main idea the main uh topic 
okay that we have dealt with okay at the end so in this way we can emphasize we can reinforce that main idea because uh, the reader means uh, they cannot remember the whole text but whatever we write in our conclusion whatever we give in our conclusion okay uh, means, uh, in a nutshell okay in brief they will assimilate those things so uh, this segment has to wrap all of your arguments and factors so they just wrap up whatever we have argumented whatever evidences or claims we have given this must restate the primary arguments in a simplified way okay so what is the main idea that should be restated and reinforced in a simplified manner then make sure that the reader is left with something to think about okay so uh, it should uh, um, so generate uh, uh, or provoke them I, our writing should be thought provoking that should leave reader to think about that matter or any such problem that we have discussed so these are the three parts of uh, that we usually we organize our paragraph writing into these three parts then a sample of a paragraph here that tells that how the topic sentence supporting sentence and concluding sentence all these three are important and they play their own role so we can see the first electric cars are the future in the auto industry as climate change gets worse governments are going to start limiting the number of gasoline cars being built the cost of gas gas will continue to rise which will make it harder for people to afford to run gas powered cars as battery technology improves electric cars will be able to travel further on a charge and cost less to buy eventually most gas powered cars will be replaced by electric cars so we can see here in this paragraph that the first line electric cars are the future in the auto industry this is the topic sentence okay so this is the main uh, statement or the focus statement and the following statement okay the statements that are followed by they just uh, adding up the knowledge that uh, why electric cars are coming to work why they are they have a future scope because uh, due to climatic change okay due to climatic change uh, the conditions are getting worse so government has put initiative to just uh, bring forward these electric cars okay in order to uh, just uh, save the fuel or to control the pol pollution okay then the cost uh, of gas will continue to rise okay so it makes harder for people to afford gas powered cars and that's why this this uh, uh, electric run cars they can be proved beneficial now moreover as battery technology improves now in this field also improvement has been made which enables electric cars to travel and to uh, just uh, uh, be there for human use okay and then at last so at last we are ending it so we can end our uh, means uh, uh, whatever we are writing either a paragraph or an essay so we can uh, just use these concluding words like to sum up in the end uh, so okay eventually consequently so through this we can show that now we are ending the paragraph and eventually most gas powered cars will be replaced by electric cars so we can see here the lines written with uh, red color line uh, it is uh, it tells the topic sentence and the green lines they are supporting the topic sentence and at last we come to the conclusion that uh, the cars uh, gas powered cars will be replaced by electric cars very soon okay so in this way and one thing more in a paragraph we cannot jump from one sentence to another okay if we are just uh, uh, focusing on other idea or if we are moving towards other point we can use linking words or phrases or sentences to just make the connection 
okay in order to maintain the coherence the connectivity and the natural flow of sentences we shall use the, these uh, transitional words okay like as climate change gets worse we are going to tell that governments are going to uh, limit the number of gasoline cars you know, to, this is a linking phrase that uh, due to this climatic change okay or the due to this uh, uh, worsening in climate government is going to take an initiative okay and then again here because battery technology improves therefore electric cars will be uh, means beneficial and uh, uh, means uh, they can cost less okay so in this way we can connect the sentences in order to escape that uh, means emptiness and uh, that awkwardness okay that clumsiness so we can use linking words or phrases to maintain the coherence in a paragraph now coming to methods of paragraph writing so we will see basically seven methods are there now the methods are the means uh, they are the they tell the purpose means what is the purpose of our writing what is the nature of our writing according to that we choose different methods so first of all inductive method of writing so inductive method of writing in this the paragraph starts with evidences claiming for something and ends with a broader conclusion now here inductive paragraphs they begin generally and end more specifically with a point topic sentence major ideas or thesis so this inductive method of writing here we include the uh, means uh, specific observations first okay, we include the evidences or claims or uh, different explanations in the beginning and then at the end the topic sentence comes means it moves from specific to general it moves from specific observations to broader generalizations we see a situation or a problem at the minor uh, level first and then uh, just uh, studying those things okay then seeking the patterns and observations observing those things then we come to a broader conclusion okay so in this we should keep note that this para uh, this inductive method of writing it generally develops a theory okay there is no existing literature no existing theory before we just try to come to that theory through different evidences or claims okay so it shows rather than tells it uh, uh, presents a tentative hypothesis okay it is reflective and thoughtful in tone it embraces ambiguity nuances it is bottom up approach now bottom up approach means ki it moves from specific to general approach we see the particular situation first and then we move to the broader one okay so this is hypothesis generating rather than hypothesis testing so uh, we uh, should keep note that inductive method of writing the supportive sentences or the explanations they come first okay they generate they develop a theory they develop a hypothesis okay so and, uh, and then uh, means uh, at the end we come to a broader conclusion so a conclusion is derived in a topic sentence then at the end we make our topic sentence now in deductive method of writing this is the other way round this is the reciprocal of inductive so in this the paragraph starts with the topic sentence followed by the set of statements supporting the claims thesis or hypothesis it's a style of prose wherein the writer presents a claim thesis or hypothesis in introductory sentences and paragraphs and then uses subsequent paragraphs to explicate question or extend the claim so this is a top down approach that means it goes from general observation to specific ones 
we see the situation in a broader sense once uh, now here the theory has already been developed okay the theory theory is there and now in the uh, following sentences in the subsequent sentences we are trying to uh, just uh, explain that theory or testify that theory okay and then we come upon a conclusion that whether that theory that has been made that has been uh, uh, derived okay that is true or not whether that should be accepted or rejected so that's why this deductive method of writing is hypothesis testing rather than hypothesis generating so deductive writing is dominant in organizational schemes okay so and uh, organizations or workplace the piece of writings that are considered they are mostly written in deductive manner because here we have the topic sentence the main idea at first and looking to the sentence we can uh, just uh, uh, try to uh, just un understand whether this uh, piece of writing is worth reading or whether it is helpful for us or not. So, people who are busy and preoccupied with other matters prefer to view documents organized in deductive order because it enables them to immediately see whether the information is of interest to them or not. So, deductions instructions invariably follow deductive order. The scientific method follows a deductive approach. Whereas we can see uh, on the stories, the novels, okay, all such kind of writings, they are written in inductive method. In those writings, in the stories, we have the topic sentence at the end, the morals uh, of the story. That is the topic sentence, that is the main idea. It always comes at the end in a story. So, in all this means literature piece of writing, they are written in inductive order. Whereas the organizational writings, they are written in deductive order so based on the nature of the writing based on the purpose based on the approach you now how we are going to approach to our reader we choose the different methods of writing now we can uh, see the difference between inductive and deductive in a nutshell and uh, uh, here uh, the confusion will be more uh, means clearer okay so the inductive method here first particular cases particular cases are dealt with and then laws are derived okay so the particular the specific cases are dealt at first they are written at first and then uh, through those uh, uh, cases the laws are derived whereas in deductive the general laws okay means the theory it is already there it, all, it is already presented in the beginning okay so general laws are stated first followed by particular examples to prove them okay so in order to prove that general laws the particular examples are given they are there to explain them so in this way inductive order leads a new knowledge it is a method of discovery here we are going to learn something new here we are uh, discovering something okay there is no um, beforehand theory okay the theory is derived at last so uh, 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 obviously we are having something new to learn but here it does not lead to new knowledge okay so whatever the main idea it is given in the beginning so uh, we are not going to get anything new it is a method of verification and explanation we are just verifying that statement or trying to explain that statement okay trying to validate that statement now we can see this example like uh, uh, this is an example of inductive method of writing a low cost airline flight is delayed now this first line okay this is um, this first line it uh, is the observation okay we have just observed that the flight that has low cost they are usually delayed so this is observation okay now we are seeking pattern in the related in the subsequent sentence we uh, just uh, uh, sort the pattern that 
another 20 flights from the low cost airlines are delayed. Now, we are uh, looking the pattern that we have seen one flight is delayed. Now, we have seen 20 more flights. Okay. So, uh, subsequently they are being delayed. So, this is the pattern that we have drawn and based on that pattern, okay, what we have observed and the pattern that we have drawn, we have derived a broader conclusion that in this sense, the low cost airlines always have delays. Okay. So, now we come to a conclusion that since uh, we have seen that 20 flights, uh, they have been delayed, that means the most of means always these low cost flights, they get delayed. Now, this makes the topic sentence. Okay. Now, this is the topic sentence. The conclusion that we derive here, now this is the topic sentence. So, here uh, it has certain limitations and it is not like that uh, every the conclusion that we have drawn is uh, um, means uh, it is always true. Okay, we cannot prove it. Okay, the more uh, we uh, just enhance our data set. If we enhance, suppose if we see the thousand flights, okay, so we cannot tell that uh, twenty flights are delayed. So twenty one, uh, the the um, the twenty first one will not get delayed. Okay, so it cannot be proved. We cannot say that it is true. But yes, if we just enhance the data set, if we expand the data set, if we see suppose thousand or uh, 2000 flights. So, the more uh, expanded data set, the more reliable our conclusion will be. Now, if we see the example of deductive method of writing. So, here we can see the first sentence low cost airlines always have delays. Okay. Now, the, his, now here the theory, the uh, topic statement it comes first. We have uh, means we have already drawn, drawn the conclusion that low cost airlines have always delayed. Okay, so this makes the topic sentence and deductive method of writing. Now we have just to uh, uh, try means now we just uh, try to we can uh, just formulate a hypothesis according to this topic sentence. Okay, so we see the, we have drawn a theory that low cost airlines always have delays. So in this way we can formulate. Uh, means uh, hypothesis that uh, maybe the passengers flying from the low cost airlines will always get delayed. Okay, so this is our falsifying hypothesis, our null hypothesis, which we have to just test and verify, and then we uh, can come to the conclusion. Okay, so we can see that uh, out five out of hundred flights. Now when we try to collect the data. So, 5 out of 100 flights of low cost airlines are not delayed. Now, when we collected the data, when we try to analyze or testify, we have seen that out of 100, only 5 flights, they come in time. Other, uh, otherwise, the 100 flights, they are delayed. Um, means uh, the 95 flights, they get delayed. So, therefore, now we can form a conclusion that most of the low cost airlines have delays. So, based on the test, the test or the verification or the analyzation, then we can make conclusion. We then we uh, can come to the result that whether we have to accept this theory that we have drawn earlier or we have to reject it. So, we can see that most of the writings, they use inductive and deductive come in a combined form. First, uh, the theory is formed okay and then we test the same theory verify it and then come to a proper conclusion okay so this can be said as the preliminary conclusion and then later on when we testify the things then we come to the uh, final conclusion so inductive and deductive they can be used in a combined way in writings okay now if we uh, come to the uh, since we have um, limited time. So, let us start with another uh, method of writing that is a spatial. Okay. So, it emphasizes the visual description of a particular idea detail related to location and direction. Okay. So, here the description goes from inside to outside, left to right, bottom to top, 
okay so here the means in spatial method of writing we just write in terms of space or direction so if a technocrat writes to describe the parts of a machine or a plot of ground he would organize his text spatially that is in order of a space or place that means that the spatial method of writing here uh, we just uh, uh, describe a thing in order to visualize it in the mind of the readers okay uh, the reader will get uh, an image you know an image uh, uh, maybe uh, can be appeared the way we are describing so here a meticulous uh, description with minutest details the things are written for example five times higher than the other then linear method of writing so this linear is also called sequential method of writing now this linear method of writing can be seen in every types of writing linear means writing the things in a sequence in steps okay so every writing has a beginning a middle and end so means all piece of writing are, are written in a linear fashion okay so uh, and uh, uh, we can see another example that in manuals the manuals the recipes they uh, are also a good example of linear method of writing because there we just uh, give the steps we tell the steps in sequence or if we give uh, the means uh, steps of any process if we describe any process so we uh, describe it in uh, means sequence in um, steps okay that goes uh, means one follows the another the information that next one carries it's based on the previous one so hence uh, linear method of writing uh, can be seen in manuals in the uh, means explanation of certain processes etc then chronological pattern so this chronological this refers to ideas organized in a paragraph in order of appearance in time okay so dates time and events when they are discussed okay so suppose records from earlier to the recent the uh, so uh, means it tells the that how or when the event has occurred okay so it uh, refers to the date and time of an event the occurrence of an event we can uh, either write them earlier to recent or recent to earliest okay this is the natural order of narration in which one event leads to another so this method used to document the time of an action event or the steps of an instruction so suppose describing education and achievement in an interview or when we are writing a resume or cv so we write our uh, we, uh, we just detail our educational qualification or uh, our work experience okay uh, year wise so uh, we are mentioning the time the date okay the year so that is also written in chronological pattern now exposition writing so this refers to detail or explanation of a topic called informative okay followed up by examples illustrations to support that information so exposition means what to bring out something to bring to light so here the information is extracted out so that information is given through various illustrations examples uh, comparisons construct con contrasting okay so uh, doing means comparisons contrasting the concepts definitions illustrations so such complex idea their explanation can be uh, set to we have written an expository method okay so uh, here also uh, if we talk about a certain process so when the process is explained through different uh, uh, means various uh, uh, diagrams and uh, activities and uh, different figures okay so that comes in exposition writing so it is a detailed uh, description of anything now interrupted method of writing so this refers to the use of punctuation marks okay like uh, uh, we can see here the punctuation marks they can also help to break uh, the flow of the uh, writing in order to emphasize on certain point on certain area okay so, so when we are speaking we take pause we uh, no, we take silences okay so silences and pause they uh, just help us to emphasize our main idea so while we are writing so we use these exclamatory marks 
to add emphasis to the sentence and interrupt the sentence in between. So, this interruption or breaking the sentence, it means to emphasize the main idea, to take a pause so that it can give the reader the time to comprehend the message, to grasp the message, okay, and then uh, to uh, just uh, move ahead. So, uh, it also means breaking the chunks of ideas primarily to elaborate and emphasize in clear for clear understanding okay so in order to sound more dramatic and interesting we break the flow of thoughts so sometimes we can see okay uh, like uh, while uh, reading certain story we can see that uh, we talk about the present and then go to the past and then start talking about the future so in this way we are giving a dramatic tinge to our writing through these variations or through these breaking we are uh, making a dramatic effect in our writing. So, this also uh, exhibits the dramatic effect. Okay. So, the pause interruption when we are uh, speaking in our dialogues, they are uh, given by tonal variations, gaps or some vocalized so sound like mm -hmm. But when we are writing, so that pause, that break is given through punctuation marks and this is done either to emphasize the main idea or to bring variation or dramatic effect. We can see in this example, watch out, our team is going to win. So, after speaking this, we just take a pause, we are giving um, the reader the time to just uh, pay attention, okay, at what is going to be, what is going to take place. So, uh, these are the seven methods of writing. Uh, and uh, based on the our purpose, uh, on the our approach, we choose the different methods. Now, if we see the tips, uh, um, so the um, uh, how to write uh, means a uh, uh, paragraph in an effective manner. So we can make the first sentence the topic sentence. So the first line. Uh, of our paragraph, it tells the information, it gives the information, okay. So, it should uh, uh, be, means, uh, uh, it should be written in a concise and direct way to tell uh, the purpose, okay, or the whole idea, it should manifest the whole idea, okay, and uh, then provide support via middle sentences. So, all the supporting sentences, they add the details, they are the additional sentences, to explain that main idea. Then make your last sentence a conclusion or transition. Now, this transition, it also plays a vital role. Even if it is not at the end of the piece, a conclusive sentence can refer to the last line of its own paragraph. Okay, If we have number of paragraphs, so in every paragraph also there should be a conclusive sentence which concludes a particular idea or train of thought before moving on or to start a new line of idea, okay, before going to another set of idea, we can conclude that first. So, this next paragraph can continue on the same idea, but the ending of each paragraph should briefly summarize the information that was before moving on, okay. And then know when to start a new paragraph. So, a new paragraph, there is no, uh, means uh, uh, there is a flexibility, there is no it is such rule that a paragraph should be of certain lines, but hence, uh, but uh, uh, then also we need to just uh, put our paragraph uh, as short as possible, minimum 8 to 10 lines, okay, so that it can be easily comprehended. Then paragraphs break and control the pacing of your writing and generate particular feelings or moods for your reader. If we do not give paragraphs, then our writing will uh, create monotony. Okay, So, it also just uh, uh, this paragraph breaks is very important. It, it gives the pace to reader to just comprehend whatever has been said in that para and then move to another one. Then transition words, they help together separate paragraphs, connecting them to form a current idea. So, phrases like in addition, moreover, however, to conclude, they can help readers track your ideas. So, these transitional words, they help okay, uh, and connect our lines 
or different ideas they just uh, maintain the coherence of our writing they make our writing as a single unit okay they make a whole so they help reader to track ideas and understand how they relate to each other making for a smoother more pleasant and reading experience so this is especially useful for essay writers and uh, um, um, bloggers okay who often focus on a single idea at a time to share with their audience so this is all about uh, today's topic paragraph writing and uh, i hope this will be helpful for you so uh, thank you everyone for watching this video